Hello, I'm Peter Vaughan, and today I'm at Beaconsfield Holiday Park near Shrewsbury with this, the amazing, the incredible, the one-of-a-kind Heimer Venture S. Now, in nearly 40 years of motorhome testing, I can't think of a motorhome. I've looked forward to testing nearly as much as this. It is the concept turned production vehicle. In 2019, at the Dusseldorf Caravan Salon, Heimer showed the Vision Venture. It was a concept nobody really thought they'd put it into production. But they have. It's hardly changed, apart from the front end, which retains more of the original Mercedes cab, this Venture S is pretty much as we saw the concept. And I'm the very first journalist in the world to test it. Now, Heimer is calling this a brand new breed of motorhome, and I don't blame them because there literally is nothing else on the market quite like it. It is relatively compact, just 6.45 metres long, so shorter than some van conversions. It's not that wide either, as you can see from this modest joining panel of coach-built body with Mercedes cab. Overall width is 2.16 metres. But you've probably noticed it is quite tall, over three metres high, because it comes as standard on a four-wheel drive Mercedes Sprinter, and not just any four-wheel drive Mercedes Sprinter, but the 419 with the new 190 horsepower, four-cylinder, two-litre diesel engine, and permanent four-wheel drive. Four-wheel drive? Wow! Another figure to bear in mind is the maximum gross vehicle weight, 4,100 kilos. So you will need a C1 category license to drive it in the UK. But that higher gross weight does give you a decent payload, 533 kilos in standard spec form. And span standard spec is pretty comprehensive for once, on a German motorhome. And this really is a German motorhome because not only is it a Heimer and a Mercedes, but it's on German number plates and it's left-hand drive. That's because we've nabbed one of the prototypes while it's making a brief appearance in the UK. So this isn't the final production vehicle. It is a prototype. It's one of the early, early vehicles that's been get, doing the rounds of the shows. There are one or two things that are being still refined and developed. But you can order one, and the price starts at £196,100. And if you're one of the lucky individuals that will get your name down for Venture S, you'll see it sometime in 2024. Now, as ever, that £196,000 grand price tag isn't quite the full story. As standard, the Venture S comes in stone grey with 16-inch wheels. This one is source blue, which really transforms the look of the vehicle. I have to say, well, if I was buying one, I would have to have this colour. But sharp intake of breath time, it's £7,460 extra. And these wheels and tyres, 18-inch Delta wheels with these chunky BF Goodrich off-road tyres, they're another expensive add-on at £4,960. And then, while we're looking at the options, that awning, which is an electric one, with a switch just inside the door, that's another £1,710. Well, let's not get too hung up on the extras because there aren't too many of them. Let's have a look at some of the details, like this elastocoat finish, which is a, a sort of textured finish all the way around the lower half. Wheel arches, even the front bumper from Mercedes has been coated with it all down the sides. This is a finish that's designed to be scratch resistant. If you really do plan to go off-roading and exploring places where there aren't nice, nice tarmac roads, well, this is supposed to be very, very durable and it's not gonna wreck your 200 grand investment. The Venture S is just as distinctive at the back. These windows that curve around are such a feature of the vehicle, 
and they're glass, especially made, of course, for the vehicle. This one's got the optional tow bar, that's £1,710 option, and towing is up to 1,780 kilos maximum. Then you've got mud flaps, keep the vehicle relatively clean when you do go off road. And look at the way the back is swept up. So you've got really good clearance when you're on those tricky off-road trails. That's a 24 degree um, departure angle, apparently. And then external storage. Well, you've got your gas locker in here. That just takes one six kilogram cylinder, but don't worry too much about that because your heating is diesel powered. So you're not gonna be using that much gas. You've also got your fresh water filler in there and the water tanks, both fresh and waste are inboard in the double floor. Fresh is 120 liters, waste 100 liters. Really the the next detail is just your conventional cassette toilet, but even there, there's a nice little detail of somewhere to keep your gloves or whatever, little shelf in there as well. And this one has the optional SOG venting system for the toilet. You've got an optional upgrade on the door too. Central locking is standard with a soft close function, but this one has an extra security lock, which will cost you extra. And then moving down to the front of the vehicle, you can see how serious they are about going off-road by the protection for the engine underneath the vehicle. At the front, you've also got this amazing light bar, which can be used with your main beam headlights. It's actually road legal. People will see you coming with that on. And then down the side, you've got this big skirt locker. Well, on this one, it's mainly filled with your Truma Habitation air conditioning. That again is 1,710 pounds as an option. Hmm, it's a figure Heimer seems to like 1,710. And then at the back corner, you've got a little bit of storage. We've got leveling wedges, um, hose, mains lead went in there as well. And your mains lead actually plugs in here as well. And then above that, you've got your hot and cold external shower. That's actually a standard feature. And then down below here, you've got your waste, gray waste outlet. And of course, you've got these wind down uh, corner steadies as well, which bear in mind the height of the vehicle and the fact, well, you'll see where you sleep in a minute, but bear in mind the height of the vehicle, those are quite a useful option to go for. You know what they say about saving the best bit till last? Well, that's just what I've done because you haven't seen the Venturess's party pieces yet. Just inside the door, in this cupboard, are some switches. Press one. You get lots of whirring, and in about three minutes, the upstairs bedroom is created. That is something special. Now, if you're thinking, I've seen hundreds of roofs like that on VW campers, well, this is nothing like those roofs. As well as being pneumatically operated, the patented material that's been used is similar to that used for airbags in cars. It's double layer too, so it's insulated for winter use. In fact, in a cold chamber test, Heimer says that it was taken down to minus 20 degrees inside and heated back up to plus 20 degrees in less than four hours, which sounds pretty impressive. But not only that, this roof gives you the living aspects of a much bigger motorhome because that's where your bedroom is. And in future, Heimer is also developing it so that you'll be able to operate the roof much as you do everything else because the heating and everything is operated from the control panel. And in future, you will be able to operate the roof from the main touchscreen control panel too. But the really clever bit with this roof is inside. Have you ever seen anything quite like this before? You really have got a staircase 
leading up to that upstairs bedroom. And it's not even as if this is wasted space because you've got storage in these stairs. So let's go and have a look. The stairs themselves are illuminated too, so you can safely come up and down at night. This is perhaps the most difficult aspect of the whole motorhome to show you with my video camera because, well, it's a vast space, but you can't simply get back far enough to take it all in. The bed itself is 2.04 metres long by 1.38 metres wide. That's six foot eight long by four foot six. Yes, there is a bit of a cutout at the corner, a bit like a French bed, if you like, where the stairs come up, but it's a big bed. You do get some daylight coming through these side walls and they don't insulate from noise as much as if you were downstairs in a conventional motorhome. But I slept very well in here last night. Well, I did until about six o'clock when the, uh, I think it was the frogs getting a bit amorous in the pond, but that's another story. It is a superb mattress to sleep on because that is air filled too. So you can actually adjust the uh, firmness or softness of the mattress to suit your tastes. It's one of the most comfortable beds I've ever slept in in a motorhome. And if I was somewhere like the south of France, I could also open up this whole back panel and let the daylight and fresh air flood in. What a place to sit say if you were at a motor, motor racing event and watch the cars go past or whatever sporting activity you fancy. This is one of the Venture S's star features. So is the upstairs bedroom the Venture S's star feature or is this it? Let me know what you think in the comments below because I think if I was in the south of France, this might be my favorite aspect. Just release those two handles. Of course, they lock with the key and press a little button here and down drops the tailgate. If you want the top part open, um, you can have a fly screen down so you don't get the mozzies in but if you want it fully open, well, this platform they say can hold 350 kilos, which is more than I weigh by some margin. So should be all right on here. You can buy from Hymer a couple of outdoor chairs that slot in at the end of the settees and then sit out here and enjoy the view. And Hymer will be providing a sort of safety screen that goes around the outside of the area so that you don't fall off. And then if you want to access the sun deck from outside, simply a ladder and a grab handle. And up you go. Oh. And enjoy the view. And then when you close the back panel, you'll notice these rails. Now, Heimer will sell you a luggage box that will go on the back of here, or you can get a bike rack. Or you might alternatively decide to travel with your bikes inside the vehicle, because you have these lashing points in the rear lounge for that purpose. But this rear lounge doesn't just come to life when it's a glorious hot day and you can open the back up. It's a great rear lounge full stop, starting with these soft pillow-like backrest cushions. Now, okay, the settees aren't long enough for you to put your feet up. Well, they are if you overhang your feet at the end, but they're not like six foot sofas. They're relatively modest, but you can still put your feet up that way or put your feet up on the other side. And because there's no fixed table, it feels lovely and open. It feels even more lovely and open because of these windows, the way they wrap around the 
just a thin pillar between the tailgate window and these curved side windows. Remember, of course, these windows are glass, but they are double glazed as well. This one's got the optional leather upholstery. I think that's £2,460, but there are two alternatives if you don't want leather. There's a drawer under this seat for a bit of storage. But much cleverer is the table because it's hidden away underneath the offside settee. Just lift the base cushion, lift it up, and then you can, or two. Tabletop is bamboo. And it's a very adjustable space. What else can I tell you? Well, the lighting is very variable too. You've got these LED strips at the top. You've got this hanging lamp, which you'll have seen in the bedroom as well, because it has various different positions that you can use it in around the vehicle. You just unplug it and hang it wherever you want. You've then got this little reading light that slots into these rails. Now this side panel, this is bamboo as well, and these rails will accept all sorts of accessories that Hymer will let you buy, including a Sonos speaker for a bit of uh, musical entertainment in the rear lounge, or even a projector system. But the thing I really like most about this lounge is well, it's just such a comfortable place to be. And with such great views. Well, I'd like that table to be included in a lot more Heimer designs. But if you're expecting the kitchen to be all singing, all dancing, and something spectacular, then, well, this may be where you decide not to order your Venture S because it's typically German. No oven, no microwave, no grill, just a two burner hob, although a nice smart gas on glass one. Decent sized fridge hidden away behind a matching uh, cupboard door is this 115 litre compressor fridge. So really good sized fridge in there. And then storage is excellent. You've got lots and lots of drawer based storage. Very little of it is cupboards apart from the, the big top locker. Lots and lots and lots of lovely big drawers being in there. And then the worktop space is good too. You've got this little sort of recess area with straps to hold things in places. In place you could use bottles or cups or whatever can go in there and they're not gonna fly around. You've got this wall mounted tap as well. A couple of main sockets up there. Um, chopping board cover for the sink. And the worktops are all Fenix, so they're scratch and uh, fingerprint resistant. Up front, you've got plenty more storage above the cab, and there'll be removable felt boxes for keeping whatever you want up there. For me, it's just great space for camera bags. And then, not only that, but what a great vehicle to work in because you've got a folding table that just appears from this little cupboard. You've got a few shelves to keep your odds and ends, a light so that you can see what you're doing, and it's just the right height for me to get to work on my laptop. On the other side of the van, you've got reasonable size wardrobe, which is illuminated, and a pull-out storage unit underneath. I love these little leather tags too on all the locker doors. But the clever bit is the washroom because you've got this lovely wide aisle coming through the vehicle. It's part of the reason why it feels so spacious, despite being only six and a half meters long. But the bathroom has a trick up its sleeve, as you probably expect by now. Just twist this catch, pull on the washroom wall, and suddenly it's greatly increased in size. You can still get through, you can still go upstairs to bed, still get through to the rear lounge, but now you have a much, much more usable washroom. 
I won't dwell too long on the washroom because this is an area where Heimer told me there are quite a few changes to be made. But you have got a good sized basin, you've got plenty of storage, you've got useful little shelves, big mirror space, opening window, and although the toilet is mounted high, you have a little pull out footrest so your feet aren't left dangling. Now at the moment that is a little bit wobbly, but that will be changed in production. For showering, you need to put that footrest away. And then there's a simple catch to release. And the wall behind the basin with the basin and the mirror and everything just pulls around and creates a semi-separate shower cubicle. It's the swing wall design that we've seen in countless other motorhomes over the years. And it works pretty well in here. It gives you a good size shower cubicle. Shower head itself isn't on a riser bar. You have to either hand hold it or clip it to the ceiling. Um, and I did find that water rather pools in that front uh, corner by the wall. Um, but again, that is something that I Heimer tell me is being addressed in production. Just a couple more details to show you before we go for a drive. And one of those is under this trap door in the floor, you've got four 80 amp hour lithium batteries. So 320 amp hours in total. Remember, of course, you've got the three solar panels on the roof and you've also got a 1300 watt inverter as standard as well. So plenty of power, plenty of potential for camping off grid. And it's also possible to turn the rear lounge into a double bed. 1.92 meters long by 1.1 meters wide, or six foot three and a half by three foot seven and a half. So not a huge bed, but if you did have a guest to pop, pop by when you were staying on a campsite, well, they could use this. Or if you were in Northern Scotland or on, in Shetland or something and uh, a gale was brewing and you didn't want to put the roof up, this could be your occasional alternative bed rather than having to check into a hotel. Right, time to go for a drive. It's a long way up, isn't it? So, what's it like on the road? Usual Mercedes Benz, foot on the brake, press the button to start, and that horrible squeaking noise tells me that I've left the step out. Well, don't have to get up and just press that button on the dashboard. Also down there is the electric waste water valve switch. So, off we go. Now you've got the usual MBUX display from Mercedes-Benz with sat-nav. It's got like a fisheye view for the reversing camera and Heimer spec this very highly indeed. So you get the top Sprinter engine, the 190 horsepower, now four cylinder rather than the old V6, but 190 horsepower still, and 440 Newton meters of torque, which explains why this motorhome never ever feels sluggish. It is also beautifully, beautifully smooth because you've got the nine speed automatic gearbox as standard. And in the usual Merck fashion, it's controlled with what looks like the stalk for the windscreen wipers. Windscreen wipers are actually over on this side, but what else can I tell you? Well, the one thing I feared with this vehicle was with it being so tall and relatively narrow, it might wobble about like a jelly on a plate if you got a bit keen going around some corners. Nothing could be further from the truth. It does feel very, very stable. Of course, if you want to see what these sprinters are like off-road, well, I'm not gonna be able to show you that today, unfortunately, but if you look at our video of the RP Rebellion, that will give you a clue just how capable these vehicles are when the going gets a bit gloopy and muddy. Certainly, it'll do anything that you're likely to want to do 
in your £200,000 motorhome. The seats, I should mention too, because they are utterly superb. Tilt and uh, height adjustment on the squabs. Adjustable armrests, of course. And you've even got a section of length adjustment on the squab cushion as well. If you're long in the leg, that really does add to your comfort. Seats in this one, of course, we've got the optional leather upholstery to match the finish in the rear, and they're also optionally heated. Well, another thing I should mention is that despite this being a prototype, it has a lot less rattles than many upmarket production motorhomes that I've tested. So by the time they get it into production, you should be very pleasantly surprised by the lack of conversion noise. But really, driving this motorhome only reinforces my thoughts that, well, if it was just me and Katie, and we hadn't got the kids still at home, I would really want one of these. So it's final verdict time on the Heimer Venture S. What can I say? This is a remarkable motorhome. Yes, it's a lot of money, but in nearly 40 years of motorhome testing, I can't think of another van that's had so many innovative or new features. That roof and the upstairs bed, which really is upstairs, is really clever. This sunset deck is really neat too. And I love that slide out table. The, the office desk, yeah, I could go on and on. What don't I like? Well, when you do sleep up there, you are more aware of noise from everything around you. And it does get quite light when the sun rises in the morning. So pack some eye masks, maybe even some earplugs. If you can afford one of these, what a great vehicle for off-grid, off-road touring. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the very first review of the Heimer Venture S. More videos coming along very soon.